I bring greetings from Carolina States. As you know, some of you who don't know me, I'm Raj Punuru. I used to be part of this fellowship, and we really had a wonderful time. And choir, you are the best in America. I want you to know that you know, we know what, is, uh, what we lack in North Carolina State, so you guys are the best. Well, once again, greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. <coughs> And I praise God for this wonderful opportunity he has given us to ponder upon the sayings that our Lord uttered on the cross. Before we continue further, we've been sitting here, just look unto the Lord for his grace in our life. <coughs> Bow your heads if you can. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for your grace in our life. Thank you for the love you displayed on the cross, Lord. Thank you for your son. As I share my thoughts in the word of God, Lord, lead me through your spirit, fill me with your grace. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. See, the word of God, these seven sayings that were uttered on the cross were spoken over the period of six hours. But if you consider the last three sayings, probably this, they were spoken in the period of two minutes. That were the last statements of our Lord Jesus Christ. Knowing, every, Bible says, Knowing he accomplished everything to, to fulfill the scripture, he said, I thirst, and they gave him sour wine. He received the sour wine, and he said, it is finished. And he bowed and gave up his spirit by saying the seventh word. Our dear brothers and pastors eloquently shared their thoughts in the word of God, so I'm not going to go back and repeat what they have said, but I may steal thoughts of our seventh speaker, dear Sunil. If I steal your thoughts, it's not my, don't blame me. Remember, we have the same spirit that is flowing through us. Amen? Praise God. See, so the seventh word, it is finished. Indeed, it's my privilege to share thoughts on that particular word. I have a niece in... North Carolina said he's a high school, she's a high schooler. And last year, when he's done with her year-end tests, I asked her, hey, are you worried about your results? She said, no, absolutely not. I know I would ace them, but I'm glad I've finished them. Being an honor roll student, she knew what would be the result of her exam. She knew how she prepared, and she knew what would be the result. That's why she is glad that she has finished all of those. Remember, our Lord Jesus Christ was the Son of God who was in the beginning with God, and he created heavens, earth, and seas, and everything in it. He knew past, future, and present, present and future. He knew everything. Knowing everything, he said, I have accomplished everything. Knowing all things were accomplished, he said, it is finished. Not everybody knew at the cross, not even John, not even her mo his mom, nobody knew. But he knew, because he know, he knew that the sacrifice he made on the cross will, be, will please the God the Father. That's why he said, it is finished. Like, like the student who thought she would ace them out, Jesus knew everything. He knew. But how do we know? We don't know what happened being in the shoes of disciples. They don't know what happens after a day or two. But they all came to know on the day of resurrection. Remember, Jesus paid the price on the cross, but the receipt was given on the third day. That's when we knew, yes, indeed, God accepted his sacrifice. Knowing that he accomplished everything, he said, it is finished. It is finished word is derived from the Greek word tetelestai. It's tetelestai. The same word was used in Bible many occasions with a different synonym. Somewhere it is used as accomplished, it is complete, completed, paid, fulfilled, carried. There's many synonyms. But this is very, if you translate Greek to, if you look at Greek translated New Testament, it says it is completed. That is very appropriate. Christ completed the redemptive work that was assigned to him by God the Father. He completed. Let's look at what he has completed. 
what he did for us. As our pastors and brothers shared their thoughts, I'm not going to go back and sit in the time. He redeemed us. He shed his blood in the remission of our sins. He reconciled us with God the Father. He granted the access to God. He granted us the access to God the Father. He fulfilled the prophecies. He fulfilled the law. And most important thing is, he displayed the love of God on the cross. He completed redemptive work of God by displaying the love of God on the cross. We need to comprehend that. That's what, unless we comprehend the love of God, we still live in the law. Yes, Jesus fulfilled the law, but if you don't understand the love of God, we still today, we live in the law. That's why Apostle said, Apostle Paul was praying that you comprehend the length and the width and depth and height of love. He is saying that, I hope you understand the length and, length and width and depth and height of Christ's love on the cross. Unless you understand what he has done for you, un unless you understand the love of Christ, you will still be in the law. We, we experience that, I have experienced that in my life, and I've seen many people doing it. So many people, so many of Christian brothers and sisters are still trying to please the God with their works. Remember, it is a gift of God. Our salvation is not, we did not achieve by our works. It is by grace. It's a gift from God, we know that. But at times we forget that. And we try to please God. We try to please God with our own works, with our traditions. That's why we see this many number of divisions in Christianity. That's why you see Christian brothers and sisters falling back. That's why we see lukewarm Christians, because they did not understand the love of God. Praise be to God. Remember, God forgave our sins, and he said, I will not remember them no more. And he forgave our, with his forbearance, he forgave our past, present, and future sins. I am not endorsing sins. Jesus Christ granted us freedom, not, not free to sin, rather freedom from sin. That's, that's why Apostle Paul says, if you take that freedom for granted, and if you fulfill desires of flesh, you will not inherit the kingdom, kingdom, of, kingdom of God, that is period. If we take freedom for granted, we will not inherit the kingdom of God. I'm not endorsing sin. But remember, when you are feeling guilt, when somebody is feeling guilty, they hesitate to come to the presence of God. That's what I used to do. When I, when I, when I upset my father when I was a child, I, I tried to hide from him. Maybe a few days until he, until he came to me, hey, why are you hiding? Because I knew I did a mistake. I was afraid. I know I fall short of his love. That's why I didn't go. That's why if you don't comprehend the love of God, you will not go to the presence of God because we think God is, God requires holy. Yes, God requires holy. But at the, at the same time, he bestowed his grace upon us. When you fall down, he's asking you to come to his presence. And we don't go. That's why people fall away. People fall away saying that we are not good enough. Yes, we have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. No, I did something wrong, so I could not please him anymore. No. God knew who you are. He sacrificed his only, fun for, his only son for your sake while you were sinner. Remember, we have to remember what he did on the cross. He displayed 
his love on the cross. We have to comprehend. Bible says, unless we comprehend the love of Christ on the cross, God's full, God's in our hearts, his fullness is not going to be there. If I rephrase it, unless we understand the love of God, our hearts are not filled with fullness of God. Unless he is in our God, we're not going to be conformed to the image of Christ. If you have fear of God, that's fine, but you're not going to go that far with fear of God. But if you have fear of God by understanding the love of Christ, you will go all the way. Christ died on the cross to reconcile us, to redeem us, and to justify us. And he paid the price once for all. Earlier, animals only covered the sin. But not anymore, we don't need any offerings. We don't need to sacrifice anything. But we have to live by faith. We will be able to successfully live by faith if we understand the love of God. We know John 3.16. If you ask new believer, he knows John 3.16 very well. If you, if you ask him, why did, you believe, why did you believe in Jesus Christ? He says, for God so loved the world. He gave his only begotten son. Whoever believes in him, he shall not perish, but have eternal life. You ask him after six months, he will say, God sacrificed his only son. That is Jesus Christ. That's why I believe in him. Conveniently, love is gone. Maybe I'm exaggerating. That's what happens. We tend to take everything for granted. We always remember. We should always remember the love of God that was displayed, that agape love that was displayed, that sacrificial love that was displayed on the, cry, on the cross. The cry, it is finished, is not of defeat. He did not say that because he's done with everything, all the agony. It is, it is a cry of victory. Victory that he has finished, that everything that was assigned to him by God the Father. And praise be to God and thanks to God for this great opportunity he has given us to share my thoughts. Amen.